therapy be lekker koue ochend. Um, ek, uiteraard, ek het groot geword in die woestijn gedeelte van die land, maar ek hou van die koue. Um, ek, ek, die celle raak bykie levendiger, vermoed ek. Uh, ek is een bykie wakkerder in die, in die winter. Um, so, wonderlik om julle te sien, baie, baie welkom. My God, uh, bless us as we worship. And, and because we gather in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus to worship, um, that's always our focus. That's, that's what centers us. Our worship sh- should always be Christocentric, focusing, focusing on God. And that's why I would often say to people, the job of the preacher is simply to point away from him or herself to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of, of, of the world. And uh, so I'd like to, to invite you to sing with me. Um, Maxwell, you've got to help us here. Just, to, just in our singing to declare that we are here to worship. So let's sing together, Yeah, I am to, to worship. singing this song and I, and I realized perhaps we should often sing these songs in a in an awful way not awful but awful <laughs> to be full of awe and to be full of gratitude and wonder before God because when we begin to consider the holiness of God it sort of happens that we become mindful of our own brokenness it sort of happens that we become mindful of our own shortcomings because we stand before this mighty God. Mighty, yet loving, filled with compassion. A God that loves us despite all our brokenness, despite all our sins. And we come for worship because we, we long for this God that presents us with wholeness. And it's, it's the psalmist, the psalmist in Psalm 42, that, that talks about the struggle of faith, this tension um, in the life of all believers. You see, sometimes we have faith and sometimes we struggle with our faith. Sometimes we find ourselves on the high hills and we want to sing praises and shout to the glory of God. But there are moments where we find ourselves in the dark depths of life and we cry out, God, where are you? Now, remember, we are not the only ones. Our Savior was on the cross, and he said, My God, my God, 
why have you forsaken me? So, so the, the Christian journey, the spiritual journey is one of longing, it's one of yearning for God. So sing with me this morning that, that beautiful song, As the Deer Pants for Water. And to experience the glory and the fullness of knowing you. But Lord, as we gather here this morning, we, we acknowledge that we struggle so much. We often stumble and we often fall. We often become tired. We often feel frustrated in our faith. We often feel frustrated, Lord, as we... Because sometimes it feels as if you are so far away from us. And then we cry out. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, that you often meet us in those moments where we learn to be quiet. Thank you that you meet us in those moments when we don't even know how to pray and your Spirit comes and intercedes with sighs too deep for our understanding. Thank you for moments together in your presence and for the realization 
that we serve a loving God. A loving God, a loving God, a compassionate God, a God of truth and a God of justice. A God who reaches out to God's children. A God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. A God whose hand is never too short to, to help us. And a God whose ear always hears us when we cry out. A God who even hears us when we sigh in distress. So Lord, we praise you and we give you thanks for this day that you have made. For Lord, it's the day that you've made and we shall rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. Goedemorgen, broers en zusters. Namens die leraar en kerkraad graag die volgende aankondigings, baie kortliks. Um, soos jy weet is die sondagskool en katkasasie klas toe vir die vakantie. Um, onthou net dit. Dan kom Frans vir voorbeding vir broer Graham Renneke, wat herstel na een hartoperatie. Ons kom vraag dat die heren daarvoor om ook God van nabijheid sal wees, dat hy ook daarvoor kom en sal herstel. En ook vir broer Charles Roberts, kom vraag dat hy vir hom ook in gebed sal op, 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 op draas sublief. Um, dan ook net voorbereiding vir diegene wie siek is wat ons nie van weet nie. En ook um, voorbereiding vir die wie geliefd is verloor het aan die dood. Um, ach die heren ook vir hulle God van nabij het wees en vir hulle ook versterkt hier in die tijd. Um, kom ons bid saam. Aanmachtige God en Jemelse Vader, Heere, in hierdie ochend hier een blije voorig om weer die wederhuis te kan betree. Heere, jy het ons dier een lang en donker nacht gedra en vanochtend weer vir ons kom sien met lichaamskrachte gezondheid en ook een nieuwe dag. Heere, dit kon vanochtend soveel anders gewees het, maar jy het weer gekies vanochtend om ons name in die levensboek vanochtend te hee. En ons kom sê vir jy, baie dankie daarvoor en kom so hy alle lof, alle eer aan jy toe vanochtend. Vader, want sonder jy is ons maar niks. Jy kom reken ons sondes nie aan ons toe nie, my God, en jy verweider dit soos ver as die ooste van die weeste af. Vader van die eiland, vanochtend kom draans van vandag jy die gemeente aan jy voor, en ons kom vraag dat jy vir elkeen van ons God van haar beheid sal wees, Heere. Ons kom vraag dat jy hier die gemeente sy arms omhoog sal hou, vir hom wie ons as leier het, Heere, wie vir ons die voortouw trek, ons kom vraag dat jy vir hom onder jy bloed sal trek, ons steek om weg achter jy truis, kom versterk vir hom, dat hy jy kudde sal lei, en ook sal bedien. Heer Jesus, van ochend kom vraag ons, dat jy vir ons sal vergewe, waar ons fouteer het, waar ons gesondig het, was dit ook in woord, in daad, of in gedachte, ons kom vraag dat jy vir ons sal vergewe, ons sondes van ochend, Wees vir ons een God van nabijheid, hier die dag wat voorle. Hier die dag is onbekend vir ons, my God, maar jy weet al reeds wat het vir ons inhou. En ons kom bid dat jy vir elkeen van ons in die nabijheid sal wees. Heer, en vir ochend kom bid ons al die dinge nie, omdat ons dit werd is nie, nie omdat ons dit verdien nie, maar ons kom bid dit in jy groot en heilige naam sy wil. En lei ons soos jy die disciples van ouds geleer het van ons, wanneer ons sal bid. Onse Vader, wat in die jomme is, Laat die naam geheilig word. Laat die koninkrijk kom. Laat die wil geskiet, soos in die jongel, net so op die aarde. Geef ons vandag ons dagelikse brood, en vergeef ons ons schulden, soos ons ook ons schuldenaars vergewe. En lei ons nie in versoeken nie, maar verlos ons van die bose, want in jy behoort die koninkrijk, en die kracht, en die heerlijkheid, tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Geniet die diens. Ek wil graag hee dat die, I'd like to invite you to, to join me as we continue to worship God, um, but also as we invite each other into worship. As the deer pants for streams of water, so Lord, we long for you, O God. For each day, the Lord pours his unfailing love upon us.
For each night, we sing you songs, praying to the God who gives us life. Send out your light and your truth, O God. Let them guide us to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. Then we will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all our joy. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's uh, acknowledge each other and, and share the peace of, of the Lord. That's all that song, um, My Peace I Give Unto You. in my life and Ik vermoed dat ik na, ik was in Appington geweest. Dat is een 
Um, het meneer, ek het in die week in die foto gesien van een baie jonge meneer en jy vrou, um, toe hulle twee vir mekaar ja gesê het, voor jy, en ons so dankbaar vir die voorbeeld van hulle liefde vir ons, um, vir hulle kinders uit die aard, um, mag die heren jylle van hulle sê, um, jylle is, ons is geseer as gevoel van jylle onder andere, so baie baie gelukkig, kom ons neem hulle! It's alright, it's alright, but you know, um, so we, we, we gather in, in the presence of God to just give thanks to God. Um, you know, whether, whether your birthday was last month, it's, it's okay, because now you come and you say, God, you've, you've actually been so good to me. You've been with me through the ups and downs of my life. But, but the wonderful thing about God is he holds us in his hands through the ups and the downs. And he continues to bless us. And he continues to enable us to, to flourish in different ways. So, Tania, baie, baie geluk ook aan, aan jou. Um, is het vandag? Yes. Ok, sê is nou nie, so nie. Um, is hy? Het is, dit is uh, uh, Brent uh, sy mami. Um, sê, is, sê is 80 vandag. Um, Oké, okay, ik dwaal nou af en Lizelle sê, moet niet afdwaal van die tekst, doen wat je moet doen. En so, uh, uh, maar, zo, uh, so, ik so kan er net gogo, toen ons in Durban was, toen to sê een van die, gem- nou moet onze dokter zoek, een van die gemeentelede sê, uh, um, vir ons, uh, nou skinner ek, oor my dierbare zdijkend. So is een dierbare wit dan in die gemeente. Sy sê, um, Reverend, you know, um, if you want to go to a doctor, there's a doctor just around the corner, just down the road from you. He's a colored doctor and he's so efficient. I can't forgive I can't forgive I can't help them all verstaan waarom ze gepraat het, so ze gepraat het. But, um, and so to ega kom to the doctor potgieter. And, uh, oh, doctor potgieter, uh, where are you from? Oh, PE. Uh, where, where? Bethesda. Okay, congregational church, yes. And then I came to Belleville and I met Brent. Potgieter, okay, P.E. You know, our doctor was Dr. Potgieter in, in Durban. Oh yeah, that was my brother. And then I came here and I met Auntie Esther. So, um, happy birthday to, to um, Auntie Esther. For, um, it's, it's, I mean, she's just such a beautiful saint of God and we give thanks to God for her life. Um, my God bless her uh, tremendously. Malcolm, jylle gaat weg. Um, so, jylle moet baie veilig wees. Europa is nie meer so, is nie altyd so veilige plekkie. Um, Christy sê, sy het in, sy het in, uh, in Europa meer kruim gesien as, as hier so. <laughs> um, maar geniet het, jylle werk hard. Um, geniet die tyd weg. Um, sit jou foon op kolle af. Want jy sikkel, hy is een van die mense wat sikkel om af te skakel. So, switch off. Um, allow God to lead you to green pastures. I, I often say to people in, in ministry, um, because sometimes we expect pastors to run around and just to um, be there all the time. And I say, no, 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 no. I've, I've got to learn how to slow down. I've got to learn how to say no. Um, because I cannot lead the people of God to green pastures and quiet waters if I am in perpetual motion. So, rest in in genie die tijd daar. Ek het nou so geloor te sien, ek uitsie, sit my ma in die kerk, en nou moet ek nog verzichtiger wees, so wat ek sê. My ma bring in die busy man, so ek kan nie, ek kan nie altyd lekker skinner van, somtijds, soos die ander dag toe ek julle gesê het, my ma wat ons kos gee voordat ons na mense toe gaan, Want het moet nie, jy moet nie, mens moet nie dink ons uitgevreed die, ons krij nie kost by die huis. <laughs> uh, Mama, baie welkom. Goed om, goed om jou saam met ons te, te um, so as ek, as ek strykel, dan weet jylle, dis my ma wat die so is. 
um, toe ek begin het in die kerk, en ons ouwens het mos, ons ouwens het mos allemaal lekker stapies, ons stap, jy weet, if, if you, if you, um, if you're a brother and there's a, there's a, a nice degree of melanin in, in your body, then you walk like you're enjoying life. So I used to have my swag. And uh, so I started ministry in Queenstown and my mother said, on down it, loop recht. As jy in die kerk kom, loop ordentlik. So we had our first uh, first service, and it's the uh, there's a procession, and I'm right at the back. And because I'm sort of taller, I I made sure that there's a distance between myself and the other, so that I could just. <laughs> and to work my master's stem in on Madlock. Yeah. So um, we give thanks and praise to to our parents who who shape us and to. Um, who bless us with their words and their lives, but also with their hands sometimes. Um, God is good. Amen. Gracious God, we've, we've been dwelling in the world in our lives. We've been thinking about our lives, and we've been giving thanks to you as we remember your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for, for blessing us in our lives. Thank you for birthdays, and thank you for anniversaries, and through all these things, we remember your grace and we remember your goodness. Thank you, Lord, also for leading us into places of rest. Thank you, Lord, that you enable us to labor, and, and after our labor, we may rest and we may take time off. So thank you for that gift. Bless our friends as there is entering a time of rest. Thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for mothers and fathers. Thank you for those who raise us and nurture us. Thank you for those who teach us about you and teach us how to pray and teach us about the simple things in life which are the fundamental things in life. Thank you, Lord, for your healing grace. Dear Lord, we continue to pray for those that are not well. We pray for our brother Charles. We pray for Graham. We pray for Brian. We pray for even for those that I don't know of at this moment, but we bring all our loved ones, friends and family to your hands of grace. Gracious Father, be glorified among us now. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Vrienden, ek wil hee, jylle moet saam met my sing hierdie prachtige lied wat vir my terugvat na my kinder daar amper, waar ons vir mekaar sê, Heer, ek hoor van reike sien.
bid het onder die bloed van die Heere, van bamper tot bamper, um, en vir elke nat en moer, en vir die, and we were laughing about it, but that's the truth, that's where we're coming from. And we've experienced a, a bit of upward mobility, right? Um, but we should never cease giving thanks. We should always remember where we're coming from. But always say, thank you. So let us say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for amazing gifts. Thank you for, for your providence in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you, that you have blessed us with, with these tools and these, the, the equipment in order for us to proclaim your word and your goodness and your love, your grace to so many more people than simply those that gather here on a Sunday. So bless these instruments. May we use it to the glory of your name and may all that we do simply point away from ourselves to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Lord, thank you for forgive us. Thank you for hands that, and hearts that open um, themselves to you and to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that we may receive. And as we receive, we say thank you. But teach us, Lord, the glory and the wonder and the blessing of giving to the glory of your name. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Dear friends, <coughs> um, now I really need to get to the text and uh, so that we can uh, leave here um, relatively <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> May, may we give thanks to God and bless God with, with our tithes and offerings. Um, and as we do so, I'll, I'll ask my brother to just uh, bless us with, with songs of thanksgiving. Dear friends, sing with me just, just the one, two lines of, of the song, Above All Powers.
scripture readings comes out of 2 Kings 5 verse 1 to 14. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria, he was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, I am, I, am I God to kill and make alive, that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy. Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went to his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of the little child, and he was clean. This is the word of the Lord. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm sure I've shared um, this, this text with you before. It's the legendary reading for today. Um, and I decided instead of um, looking at the gospel, I decided to, to look at this, this text because it's, it's one of those very beautiful texts that we find in, in, in Scripture. The last time I ministered about this particular text, I spoke about um, the fact that all of us walk around with brokenness because it, it started off saying that Naaman was a, a, a mighty warrior. He was a man of valor. But he was a leper. And, and, and we, we really um, sort of uh, reflected that particular day on the fact that all of us um, have a, despite all our greatness, despite all that we have, despite all our achievements, despite the fact that we've been blessed tremendously by God, there's a sense in which there's a but he or she as leprosy, our brokenness. And, and, and we spoke about the fact that because of, of this brokenness in all of us, uh, it therefore begs us to, to, to live a little bit more humbly, to live humble, humbly before God, but also to, to be more patient, as I suggested earlier, with others, because there's brokenness with us, and to be less judgmental, um, because all of us are are really people on our spiritual journey under construction. But today I want, to, I want to look at something else that I see in this particular text. I want to talk 
want to invite you to, to think with me around the, the issue of our expectations. All of us have so many expectations in life. All of us grow up with, with perspectives about the way our lives will go. We also have a, a set of expectations about God. And so in the fifth chapter of Second Acts, we, we see it's all about expectations and, and what different people expect God to do. So we are introduced to, to a commander of the Assyrian army whose name is Naaman. And as the Bible says, Naaman was a great man and, and a valiant warrior. He was highly regarded by the king. The king respected this man. Verse 1 tells us that the Lord, and, and that was strange, the Lord had given him victory over Israel. They were the enemies. God is against Israel at this point in the history because remember, one of the features of the children of Israel, they are, as some translation referred to them, stiff-necked people. They do their own thing all the time, especially when things are wonderful in their lives. They, they tend to follow, uh, you know, their own will and, and follow, even follow other gods. And so God, again, is punishing them and is blessing the enemy so that the enemy can teach them a lesson. And so the Lord is blessing an Assyrian commander who had been attacking and fighting against Israel. God is not blessing Israel, but blessing Assyria. God is not giving Israel victory, but he's giving Assyria victory. And so Naaman is this amazing military um, hero for Syria. However, he's got leprosy. And, and, and the thing is, and, I, and we shared this uh, before, that within biblical times, the, biblical t the Bible is a pre-scientific text, Right? Because we know today that leprosy is a terrible disease. People lose limbs because of leprosy. However, I think we, we are at a stage in, 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 our, in our world where, you know, very few. In, in Africa, we still have people with leprosy. In India, the, the, the people still struggle a little bit. But it's something that had been dealt with because of the advances within uh, medical science. But in biblical times, even if you had some kind of severe rash, you became an outcast. You were seen as someone that had, it's, it's as a result of sin. Because remember the, the biblical worldview, the worldview of the, uh, the people in biblical times was, it was pre-scientific and therefore they would... Um, like if you read the Bible, you see uh, um, the story of the father who came to Jesus. Uh, he first went to the disciples to heal the son because he says, my son would often, the, the, um, an evil spirit would take him and would throw him down and he would sometimes fall in water and sometimes fall in fire. If, if, if a scientist would read that uh, or a medical doctor, he would say, you know, it's probably um, epilepsy. Um, or they would say in the, in the in, in, uh, um, is, just read the Gospels um, talking about a woman bent over uh, by an evil spirit. Some kind of illness. But that's how they explained, that's how they explained the, uh, the world. A person with leprosy was seen as someone that had sinned was seen as an outcast. In fact, there were leper colonies on the outskirts of towns and people with leprosy. It was, it was such a stigmatized illness that you had to stay on the outskirts and even when people approached from afar, when you see them, you had bells and you had to ring those bells and cry out, unclean, unclean. I mean, think about the stigmatization that happened. And here you have a military hero. Here you have a man that is respected and loved by the king. Here you have a great individual. And he's got leprosy. And so he obviously had to hide it. He obviously had to wear clothing that would conceal this thing that was such an inhibiting factor in his life. 
And so as the Assyrians attacked Israel, they captured various people. Um, and on one of the raids, they, they carried off a young girl um, from Israel, and she started working for Naaman's wife. And of course, it's something that you talk about at home, and it's something that you try to cover at, at a, up at home. But you see, um, I've often said to, to folk, our people knew much about, and I say this with respect, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, point fingers at anyone, but our people were the people working normally for white people, those. And I said, you know, when you wash someone else's underpants, you know much about them. So our people knew, they clean, they feed the babies, they take care of the household. So there's the slave girl working the house. So slaves know stuff about the owners. Because they are there all the time. They've got to take care of the dirty work at home. She discovered this. And then she goes to, uh, to the wife and she says, you know, in our land there is a mighty prophet that would be able to heal your husband. Now, when you read this, even the, even the fact that she speaks to, this, to, the, to, the, to the mistress, that is, I mean, it's audacious. You don't talk. You keep quiet and you do what you expect her to, to be doing. But, but there's something about her. She knows a God and she knows there's a great prophet and she's risking her life to say to, to the, her, the owner, there's someone that will be able to... To heal him. And of course they listen to her. And um, Naaman goes to the king. And he asks the king. Uh, listen. There's, the slave girl tells me. There's a guy that would be able to, to heal me. And the king gives him permission. The king also gives him lots of money. Um, to, to take with him. Naaman goes with. The Bible says. Uh, ten talents of silver and six thousand shekels of gold and ten, um, and ten sets of clothing. And so I tried to make some calculation by the help of, with the help of Google. Uh, and Google tells me that in today's, today's uh, currency values, uh, Naaman sort of um, took with him 90 million rands <laughs> worth today. So it's a lot of money for us. Because, I mean, remember, it was gold and it was silver and it was clothing. But it was extremely valuable. But the point here is Naaman is going to pay off the prophet so that he could be healed of his leprosy. But he also takes a letter from the king to, of Syria to give to the king of Israel. He also takes this letter because he needs some kind of diplomatic... Uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, remember, a diplomat can, can go, you see the, those number plates in Cape Town. The diplomats, get, they get special treatment. Um, a, if you are in the diplomatic service, you can't just be, uh, um, you, you'll do something, but they won't deal with you like a, a normal citizen. There are different set of rules with which they deal with you. So he takes this letter to the king, um, where the king of, of Assyria is asking the king of Israel to heal. And the king of Israel reads this and he says, but you know, you, you're trying to pick a fight here. Because I'm not God to heal people. What are you trying to do? So you're asking me to do something that I cannot do. And, and if I cannot do it, uh, you, you would want to attack me. And, and, and in, his, in his anxiety, he tears his clothes and the prophet of God hears about this. The prophet of God, uh, um, Elisha, hears about this and, and, and he's saying, um, King, why are you stressing? Send the guy to me. I'm, I'm the prophet, yeah. You're just the king. You, you deal with your stuff, but send him to me. I'm the one representing God. I'm the one that understands that God is great and God can perform miracles. And so... Naaman gets into to, to the house of Elisha, and when he gets there, Elisha sends a servant to go and tell him what to do. 
Now, that's an, it's an insult to a great man. Uh, if those of you who know uh, uh, Zulu and Kosa culture would know when you want to get married, right? You go with your, with your family, men, to the homestead, and you've got to stand by the gate, um, and you've got to ask permission to get in, and they will send a child. <laughs> they will send a child to you at the gate, um, and you've got to pay before you can come in. Uh, now, now that's, that's, that's meant to sort of just tease you a little bit. But, but this, Naaman sending a servant to just tell him, go and wash yourselves. That's an insult to this man. But also it's interesting how the Bible explains how he arrives at the house. He arrives with, because it says with his horses and his chariots, those were seen as, as uh, um, instruments um, and of, of power and authority. You know, it's like when, when, when uh, President Ramaphosa would come here, right? They will come with, a, there's a, in, a, in fact, before the time, people will come just to check that the building is, you know, the sweepers will come and the dogs will come. It must be safe. And then all those uh, security guys with the blue lights that push you out of the way, they, they will come so, so that the king come and when uh, the, the president comes. And when the presidents come, you better, you better stand. And that's how it works. In fact, I've, I've, I've seen, for instance, how the, you know, the Zulu king, if people see the Zulu king, you've got to, but yeah, then cause, you can't look. This powerful man goes to the simple, humble prophet of Israel, and he sends a servant to tell him, go and wash yourself, and you will be healed. And he's so He's offended. He feels indignant because of the audacity of this prophet to say to him, go and wash yourself um, in, in, in a river. And so he, he turns around and he says, I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to do that. Who are you? I mean, you've got to come here. At least come and, and speak to your God. At least come and wave your hands. Do something spectacular so that I can be. So that was his expectation. And again, how his servants, how his, the people, you know, under his command says to him, but, but say, you know, he's asking something very simple. Just go then. Just go and wash yourself. Just take a bath. Take a dip. Just seven times. That's all. He said, but no, no, no. He, sh he should have done this. You see, we, that's, that's how we are. We want God to work in a particular way. We want God to do things in a, in a way that we think God should do it. I mean, Naaman is even saying, you know, we've got better rivers. Uh, I can go to my place and, and I can go and wash there. Naaman is angry. What, why, why is he angry? Is it not the answer to his prayers? He's angry because God, uh, well, the prophet didn't fulfill his expectations. Friends, consider this. Naaman was told that he could be healed. All he had to do was wash in the river. Why is he indignant that he refuses to do what the messenger said? Why, why is he upset about the good news? The reason is because his expectations robbed him of the joy before him. Naaman had in his mind the way um, that, that he thought he, his cleaning is, or his cleansing would happen, his healing should happen. And, and because of the news, uh, because the news di did not match his expectations, he does not have joy at the news, but he is angry. Just think about it. Could Elisha not have come out to greet Naaman? Sure, he could have done that. Um, could he, Elisha not have waved his hand over the leprosy and made Naaman well? Of course, he could have done that as well. Why did Elisha not match Naaman's expectation? 
one thing that we see throughout the scriptures is that God acts in such a way to defy our expectations so that we will not rely on our own wisdom, but truly learn how to depend on God. Elisha does not match Naaman's expectations. He does not take his money. He does not even meet him. The point is simple. Will you trust the words that you are told even when it goes against your expectations? So what God is doing by defining, defying our expectations is challenging us to humble ourselves before God. You see that Naaman must humble himself if he is going to accept what Elisha has told him to do through the messenger. Naaman is an important man in Syria, a valiant man who the Lord has been using to give victory against Israel. He has come with millions of rands to buy his healing. And this is the moment when Naaman is being challenged to humble himself and to accept He's being to accept what he's being to what he what he's got to do to be cleansed. Why can I just not wash in Damascus? They are certainly much better than the rivers in Israel. And his servants say, No, 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 no. Just try and do what the man tells you to do. Friends, it is interesting how we 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 have limited the power of God because we do not see God working through some great thing. If God heals through, uh, through medicine, we think that it's the medicine rather than God. If God transforms our lives or changes our condition, we, we will neglect to consider that God did it, but it was, it was us or a series of unfortunate events. Yet God is telling us that the work, that, that he works through, through, through the mundane often. He doesn't have to, to do a big show. So God does not feel compelled to meet our expectations. God goes out of God's way to challenge our expectations, saving the world by having Jesus killed. That challenges our expectations. And so, dear friends, what are our expectations of God? How do we want God to do things for us? I think we've got to learn just to listen to God. I've, I think we've got to. I think we've got to learn to just become humble and listen to the simplicity of the words of God. He says, "Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord." Faith requires obedience. So it all starts with faith. The Bible says, Paul writes in in Romans, I mean, he makes a big deal out of it, saying that we have been saved by by grace, we've been saved by faith. It's It's through faith that we are saved. It's through faith that we are redeemed. It's through faith that we had been bought by God. So it starts with faith. Not Not doing anything, just believing. But believing needs obedience as well. May God help us. May God bless us. May God strengthen us as we learn how to follow him, as we learn to to go beyond our own expectations and allow ourselves to be surprised by joy, to be surprised by grace. I want to conclude with something. I read it during the week, and it doesn't sort of, it's not quite, part of what I'm trying to say here, but it's just a thought that I'd like to share with you. It was written by, had been written by uh, one of our ministers, Professor John DeGrucci. He says, in a time when we know how to make war, but cannot make peace, when we can land people on the moon, but struggle to find space for refugees, when we can build skyscrapers, but cannot build good houses for the poor, when we can transplant hearts and kidneys, but cannot eradicate hunger, When we have much information but little wisdom, we need to acknowledge how, despite our knowledge, we are acting like fools and putting the world at risk. We need to learn again to fear the Lord and affirm our humanity as we love God, as we love each other, and also respect each other, despite the fact that we might differ from each other. The fear of God 
is important. Geliefdes, mag die Heere ons sien. Nou tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Kom ons bid saam. Lieve Heere, ons dankie vir die wonderlijke genade, ons dankie vir die goedheid, ons dankie vir die gins. Dankie Heere, dat jy dier die heilige woord saam met ons praat en dat ons, dat ons kan leer hoe om jy te vertrou, dat ons kan leer hoe om uh, te luister na jy stem, gehoor te gee. Dankie dat jy ons dier naamans historie ook leer hoe ons moet leer om nederig te wees vir jy. Hoe ons moet leer om van ons hoopperkies af te klim en ons uh, strijdwaans af te klim, so ons kan net leer hoe om, hoe om te eer. Heilige Vader, baie dankie dat jy kom en jy gee ons verlossing op een manier wat ons nie besef het, het sal kom nie, dier die dood van die Seen. Baie dankie, Heere, dat jy dier jare ook soveel mense gebruik het om die naam te verkondig. Mense wat ons die rechte verwacht het nie. Onwaarschijnlijke karakters gebruik jy. Heere, dankie dat jy um, mense soos David gebruik wat so baie kere gestrykel het en geval het, maar elke keer kan na jy toe kom wat sê jy later, skep vir my rein naar toe God en gee op niet in die binneste van my vaste gees. Dankie, Heere, dat die mense, bakleierige mense selfs gebruik het, soos Petrus, wat, wat die rots geword het. Baie dankie heren, dat jy ouwens gebruik het, wat nie eens wonderlik kon praat het nie, soos Mooses. Mooses het gesikkel om te praat, hy was glad nie, welsprekend nie, hy het bykie gehakkel ook, maar dankie dat jy vir hom gebruik het. Dankie Heere dat die vrouwe gebruik het in die Bijbel, die het vir Maria gebruik, het vir Miriam gebruik, uh, Miriam wat een loflied sing tot eer van u, um, Maria wat een loflied sing tot eer van u, Miriam wat opstaan um, tegen die machtige Faro. Dankie dat u vir Deborah gebruik het Heere as, as richter. Baie baie dankie Heere vir Lydia wat die um, evangelie dienaars, die, die sendeling Paulus inneem um, en een veilige thuis te gee en sy bediening begin financier. Baie dankie heren, vir gemo- gewone mense wat jy gebruik. Dankie dat jy twyfelaar, soos, uh, soos uh, Thomas gebruik, um, tot eer van die naam. Dankie dat jy, belastinggaarders gebruik. Baie dankie dat jy enig een gebruik, dat jy ons ook gebruik. Heere, sien ons, lei ons en word verheerlik in ons levens. In Jesus naam die dank zeggen. Amen. Vrienden, terwijl ons ons self voorbereid vir die heilige nachtmal, wil ek jy uitnooi om saam met my te sing, um, dis een ou weisie die, um, die Arizona weisie, en uh, die woorde is, sien daar een vreemdeling by te staan. Nou, nou die vreemdeling is Jesus, en um, En ek dink is baie keer belangrik en va- vaal ook in die kerk en moet ek vir myself gereeld sê, asjeblief, moet nie dat jy groter raak as, as die Heere nie, laat toe die Heere moet Heere wees in die kerk en maak seker dat die Heere thuis is hier. So kom sing asjeblief saam met my terwijl ons ons voorbereid vir hierdie heilige maaltijd.
own, we don't come to this table trusting in our own goodness. We come because Christ has invited us. We come in gratitude and we come in wonder to give our very selves to Him that has brought us with His We come understanding our own brokenness and our imperfections. But we also know a God that brings wholeness despite our brokenness. And so hear the voice of our Lord inviting us. He says, come to me, all whose work is hard and whose load is heavy, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble-hearted, and your souls will find relief. My yoke is soft, and my load is light. The one who comes to me, I'll never turn away. Behold, here I stand at the door. If you hear my voice and opens, I will come in and be with you, and you will be with me. Dear friends, this is the Lord's table. I give thanks to God that it doesn't belong to me or even the church, but the Lord. And it's the Lord inviting all of us, all those who love him, all those who have faith in him. And we don't even want to grade the faith like higher grade faith and lower grade faith and backsliding faith. Those who have faith in him is welcome at this table. In fact, this table is a table for sinners like me and like you. But we had been redeemed because of our faith, because of the blood of Jesus. Gracious Lord, I pray now that you will bless this bread and bless the wine, that you bless us as we eat together and we drink together and we remember your gracious love. Be glorified in us, Jesus. Be present among us. O Himmel force full heerskapai. Kom hier a werk met ons trotse harte zodat so ons van ons waans kan afklim en u kan gehoorzaam. In Jesus' naam, Amen. So on the night our Lord was rested, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink it as a memorial of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the wine, you proclaim my death until I come again. Amen. Dear friends, um, Sorry, I didn't even discuss this with the deacons before the time. I think we are few enough. Um, so, so today we will actually um, serve you. Um, so I, I want to ask uh, four of my brothers and sisters to come and, and assist us. We will, uh, we will still use the, the spoon. And as we, we will just put it on your hand, and we ask that you um, prayerfully hold on to, to the host, uh, because this is, this is a holy sacrament. Prayerfully hold on to it, and meditate on the gracious love of our God. When you receive the cup, hold on to it, think about what it represents, and think about the wonderful grace that we receive. Um, through these elements. And at the end, all of us will eat and drink together. Amen. Can you please play for us, Yeah, O oh my Lord, I see thee face to face.
So I'll ask uh, Judith if you can perhaps join Peter. So Peter, you will you will be in front, and Judith will follow you. Dat is heel ander saak. Hy het net gekom om ons te red en salig te kom maak. En daarom 
kan ons eet van sy lichaam met dankbaarheid en met bewondering. And while we receive and prepare ourselves to drink together, we remember that we were once shackled by heavy burdens, Maxwell, near the load of guilt and shame, and then the hand of Jesus touched us, and we no longer the same. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. wat u vir ons gegeet om hier by mekaar te kan wees in die huis van gebed Heere dankie dat u vir ons bewaar het Heere dankie vir alles wat u vir ons kom doen ons kom belei ons sondes vir u vanmorgen Heere en ons sê vir u Heere ons is dankbaar dat u vir ons gesterf het op kolgita om ons te kom verlos van ons sondes Blijf voor ons verder dier die rivier kom God. In die naam van Jesus bid ons dit. Amen. So friends, as we, as we are leaving this place, let us affirm together that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Let us sing together. We affirm it, we believe it, and we reach out to God in faith. levens kan sê daar is een Heere wat verlos daar is een Heere wat genade gee, daar is een Heere wat alles kan niet maak vir ons as ons net glo en as ons net wil omvolg the blessing of our almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with all of you those that are gathered here, those that are at home, our loved ones far and wide. May God bless us.
Amen.